This podcast contains adult language, descriptions of violence, sexual references, and other possibly offensive themes. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to this episode of Back to the Story, where friends come together to play Dungeons and Dragons. I'll be your DM, Klaus. Let's get started. Okay. If anyone can talk of Balgarth out of a fight, it's you. <laughs> if anyone can keep us alive, it's you. But if you ask me what my calling would be, I'd say that of a defender of my friends. You don't need to change anything. I would give my life to see them through. I finally only get into trouble when I'm around you, though. I never want to have that kind of power over somebody. She lands upon the deck, but just on her toes, like a dancer, like a ballet dancer as if the weight of sin has yet to fall on her shoulders. And the light of nature will be brought to them. We haven't done this before. Does that make us professional? That would make you amateurs at best. At best, I like that. I've had a hard time finding answers in my life. I'm glad I'm here too. Where are you from, Ezekiel? Wherever your wife goes when she dreams, and I'll walk away. Fuck you, and fuck your will. There's no redemption for the likes of you. You were never loved as a child. (sighs) How do you want this? So, previously, as the Brown Scales make their way across the sea to the INL, they hold in the fortress city of Whiteguard. Melly hid away to try and speak to the skull, finding more insults than answers, as Ezekiel pep-talked Ball for his date with the golden elf, Nambra. That night, after swimming to the beach, Ball enjoyed an encounter of the romantic kind, as the spectral form of Eliza visited the remainder of the scales upon the ship. Ambushed without warning, the scales put up a valiant fight against Eliza, as she gave Ezekiel a kiss of death before escaping with the skull. After their defeat, the scales spent time with Vivian, who made an introduction to Valkyr Kirsa, a warrior priestess of Wolfrath who returned an old favor for Vivian, setting up a meeting with a court arcanist known as the Black Rune. A few hours passed before meeting in the Black Dog Saloon's basement, where an impatient older man with a black glyph of abjuration upon his forehead answered a few questions. We come back to the story here, as we see bright colored stars supporting a smiling moon of blue silver falling through darkening clouds, shifting our gaze downward over the city of Whitecard, pausing over the murmuring tavern on the edge of the Black Woods in the middle of the city. We move into a darkened storage basement surrounded by smells of stale ale below, sounds of a local tavern above, and encircled between crates and barrels are a growing band of adventurers, the bronze scales. What do you do now? Did we get what we wanted out of that? More or less, I think. I mean, he kind of took everything he needed from us and basically gave us the okay to just go. It seems like they've got everything handled on their own. So we could go get some drinks and be as normal as possible for an evening and leave tomorrow. (laughs) Sounds like a wonderful idea to me. And I don't even drink. So drinks here or do we want to make our way somewhere else? Um, I mean, the people here like to stare, but it's up to all of you. I'm quite used to stares, so... Doesn't bother me, none. Let's head to the shield wall. Or find somewhere else. Maybe someplace we haven't tried yet. Well, that could be fun, I suppose. Amson, you seem to have a good read on people. Why don't you find us the liveliest bar possible? I'm still telling stories in the main room. If he's upstairs, then we go upstairs and ask him to find us. Okay, then I will do that. (laughs) If this place isn't already the liveliest. Yeah, so as you come up in Amson, you've been watching this tavern kind of grow as the night went on. It never gets crazy rowdy. You can tell this is definitely a local stomping ground. So look, you see people as they come in, they shake hands, pat people on their shoulders. They know who everyone is in this tavern besides you and the people that come up in the basement. Especially as the nearly seven foot angel man, some sort of smoke creature, and a giant come off in the basement. It definitely turns heads. 
but you can, while they were down there meeting with the black rune asking around, you can uh, maybe roll a persu- uh, persuasion check to see if you can learn of some other places in the city. Okay, that sounds that sounds like fun. Uh, that's a dirty 20. Of course. <laughs> yeah, I just, I might as well not ask. I know it's going to be like... No, not you, 17. Tim, of like, oh, it's not that... Oh, dirty 20. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So asking around, you hear the few places. Um, this place you hear is pretty good. Um, local place, the ale is actually cheap, yet above standard in quality. There's, in the outer sink, there's a few really cheap dive bars, one of which is called the Blue Note Tavern. It's sort of a very uh, musically lively tavern. It's kind of a hole in the wall, kind of a shit place. Make sure you hold on to your uh, coin purses. But if you can get past all that, there's some good music there. Dirty 20, I'll say you've also heard whispers of another place called the Tin Something in the Ivory Reach district. It's really nice, but you don't know exactly where it is. And then another place you heard of is called Jekyll and Hyde. Um, And that's a place that is like two bars kind of smashed together. On one side is one theme and the other is uh, a different theme. It's an interesting place. And that is and that is in the Stone Flank district. Jekyll and Hyde sounds like a riot. So let's go there. Certainly sounds interesting. Okay. Um, so you guys give the directions, or Amson gets the directions, and y'all begin heading in that direction. You leave the Black Dog Saloon, exiting the Black Woods, a sort of thick wooded park in the middle of the city, and begin to head south, downward towards the coast. And then once you reach the harbor, you then head east towards the Stone Flame District. As you enter in, you see this is primarily a lot of forges. Uh, barracks, military outposts, um, quarters, and uh, smiths and forges. As you head there, you ask around again, going off the directions you were given, and eventually come to a place. The Stoneflake District is sort of leveled. It looks like it was built this way, as sort of a defensive, defensive against invasion from the east flank. And on one of the the first levels up, off of sea level, you notice a few more of um, quarter houses, basic bunks, cheap places, and around the back of that alleyway, there is a raised doorway where you see standing there looks like a half orc, um, broad shouldered, muscular, in just a simple black turtleneck, it looks like. The windows, there are several of them, all of which have the shutters closed. But you can see light streaming out. Shall we go inside? Sure. I will. Approach the half orc. I will go up with Ezekiel. Okay. He sees you all approach. Um, you see he has a shaved head, a few nicks on his neck, and looks like he's been in a few scraps before. Sticks his chin out towards you. Yeah, he's not nearly Ezekiel's height. He's maybe 6'4", though. You were then to pay the cover. Well, how much is it? A gold. Includes a drink. That doesn't sound too bad, actually. Yeah, it's not. Sure, there's... How many of us all together now? Uh, one, two, three, four... Seven total. Five since Calvin... Well, Calvin split off a little while ago. Oh, uh, did he? Did I miss that? Yeah, Sorry, I just... I, I didn't want to interrupt you, and I'm kind of still scattered a little bit, so I just okay, kind of... Okay, no said worries. So on the way, yeah, Calvin, Calvin splits off, saying his farewells. He knows where you guys are going, and I guess you all know the general direction of where he's, he's going. I'll give him eight, because Ball's a little scary, and I'm ter- uh, Also, we're all here. Yeah, you can keep the change. I'm guessing you haven't been here before. No. There's a tradition that you flip the coin, and that determines what side you go to, Jekyll or Hyde. Well, then, I flip a coin. Okay. Roll any dice. Even will be Jekyll, Odd will be Hyde. Are we all doing it? Why not? Let's do this. Even. You don't have to do what it says, but it's kind of fun. So it's kind of up to you guys, basically. Jesper and I both got one. Jesper. Ball. Ellery. Holy shit. Yep. I'm going to be sitting all up. (laughs) Hang on. I'll vote for Melly. (laughs) Okay, Okay, Melly got it too. All right. So you guys flip the coins um, as he opens the door, collecting them. 
the eight coins gesturing you guys in. As you head in, he hands you a small parchment ticket. He said, these will be good for the drinks. Um, and, as, and gestures you inside. Inside, there is a hallway that le- leads down the center to the back. Looks like there's a porch on the other side uh, where there's a... Looks like there might be some sort of patio or some sort of outdoor area on the other side of the hallway. To the left, there's a door. Um, and it's just cracked. And to the right, there's a door that's cracked as well. To the left is the sign called Jekyll. And you see streaming through as you kind of push through Ezekiel and Meli. You push through and you see white walls with elegant trim. You see a countertop of maybe not marble, but of quality granite. You see a good amount of people in here. Uh, some of, most of them generally well dressed. Maybe not quite in silks, but of well made linen, well dyed clothes. You see a bartender who has a glass uh, full of some mix of liquids and is taking a wand uh, upon a lime and is burning it. You see sparks flying from the wand as the lime is crisp and burnt on the outside as they add it, squeezing it in. As it sizzles up to the top, the drink begins to foam over. Um, It's sort of a witch's brew of uh, fog off of it. You see the general decor is bright, vibrant. Gilded and elegant. As the others, you enter into hide. Pushing through, you see um, a dark... Yes? Just quickly before mm-hmm. we go in there, when Ezekiel and Melly are splitting off to the other side, I just kind of nudge Melly with my elbow and give her a wink. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you do that as you push through. And you notice the, the whole tavern isn't that big. So you're even on opposite sides of these rooms. You're maybe 30 feet from each other. So the others, you enter into the other side. You see a, a dark room with intricate black, white, and red wallpaper. Wallpaper. Uh, these burgundies, you see it is very poorly lit with just a few can- candles and sconces here and there. Um, and you see the bartenders have masks of ravens or crows, one of which has a strange goat horned mask of some sort. You hear the music on this side, um, on the... Jekyll side, it was sort of a elegant harp and violin duo um, with sort of a choir-like voice. On the other side, you hear, it sounds like Devil Went Down to Georgia, the devil part. It's like scratching, violent sort of sounding of, upon a fiddle as you guys enter into that side. And of course, everyone looks at all of y'all as y'all are pretty interesting. This place looks rather interesting. It should be fun. A bit spooky, but I kind of like it. Well, let us get some refreshments, shall we? I'm curious to see what they have on the menu here. Okay. So as you each, respectively on each side, approach the bar and kind of ask about drinks, they show you a small piece of parchment with just a few drinks on each. Though you don't know what the other side has, they are different list. They kind of say the most popular one on the Jekyll side is the Velour, or the Throat's Tickle are the two popular, most popular ones on the Jekyll side. On the Hyde side, you have Teaser and the Temper are the most popular ones. There's a few others on the list, that, um, and they vaguely describe what kind of liquors are in them. Each one looks about a gold. There's a few on the list that are three gold each. I will have a Temper. Yeah, I okay. think that too. So the Temper is one gold. And as you, you see them prepare it, they muddle up what looks like cherries, and you see the same person that had the wand pulls out another one, this one covered in frost, and begins to freeze and solidify the mashed cherries, uh, forming this strange ice cube that he then pours into a glass before pouring a dark black liquid upon it. I'll um, try one of those as well. Okay, so you get a temper as well, one gold. As he slides it forward towards you before you take it, he takes the other one back and taps the rim of it, and it, it ignites in a very small um, yellow flame just around the edge. It seems to be almost pulling off the fumes that are coming up from the drink. Could I just get an orange juice or maybe a, a virgin daiquiri? Melly, and for you, throat's tickle? She probably nods emphatically. I thought so. 
Okay. So that one is two gold. They'll charge you a silver for some orange juice or some sort of citrus. It's probably more like grapefruit, but who knows? That's fine. I do want it like somehow I, in my furs and linens and bare feet, end up in the fancy side <laughs> drinking my orange juice with Melly, who doesn't talk. And and everyone gets a few looks, but Ezekiel, do you, you do notice a few in what looks like maybe officers off duty clothing with swords on their side kind of look over at you, um, noting you, but not really doing paying any mind. I'm going to attempt to make small talk with Melly, and when that inevitably fails, I think, for effect, I'm going to clean my toes while sitting at one of the tables and smiling at the officers on the other side of the bar. Oh, good. Okay. We're all some sort of check? A charisma-based one? Probably intimidation? Okay. I mean, that's fair. I don't know. Let's see how annoyed they get. Nine. Okay. All right. So they look over and as you start to do this, and they look at you with contempt, as if some hobo just wandered in here and started cleaning their toenails. After I a minute, smile broadly. Okay. You see a few of them, and all the officers look fairly young, and they begin talking to each other. Eventually, you see two heading over to you. A female with a very tight bound ponytail, a bun, with a, a short skirt and a long jacket. As they're coming over to your side, um, on the hide side, are you guys doing anything? You've gathered your drinks, you found a place. There's not much, there's no tables. There's a lot of sitting and some high stools, but no tables. You kind of find a place over to the side. You guys doing anything in particular? Should we toast to leaving this town behind tomorrow? That sounds wonderful. Sure. So we toast. <laughs> to not dying and staying alive in the face of complete and utter oblivion. And to setting sail tomorrow. Cheers. Okay. You cheers your temper and the flames kind of ignite and roll a little higher as you do so before you take it down. Taking it down, it is immediately painful as the flames hit. Vesper doesn't bother you as much. Uh, it just tastes a little spicy. Uh, but as it does roll down, there's a strange coolness that coalesces in your throats as it rolls down before this kind of spiciness of this cherry begins to come over. It's very delicious, though intense. What is it, what is it with lighting drinks on fire in this town? I don't know, but I'm kind of into it. <laughs> um, so as these two officers are coming towards Ezekiel, and as the others are toasting... Calvin, you branched off to... Yeah, I wanted to there. head to uh, Van Gald Urn at the Riverwatch. Town Bastion. Yeah, uh, so you head towards the Riverwatch district, finding that uh, Bastion Hound Station outpost there. You see a few uh, hounds out so outside you don't immediately recognize. The door is though is open, though they do kind of approach. Need something? Uh, I was hoping with an audience with uh, uh, Van Gogh Urn. We had some business before the other day, and I kind of wanted to uh, deal with something else that might she might be interested in. Do you have an appointment? And as he says that, you hear a voice from the back. He's fine. Let him in. Um, as you see walking out, you see. The older 30s gruff hound Dallin um, in his mail and uh, with a shield on his back and a sword on his side. Let him in. He's fine. Come on. And he gestures you in. I uh, will non nod, excuse me, to the uh, to the other guys and then follow good old Donnie uh, okay, inside. They, they return your non. And as they do, you, you come inside as... Dallin, uh leads you to the captain's room, the, her office. Opening the door inside, you see her. She looks like she's working on paperwork again. The early 20s woman, dark hair. You can see, see she still wears her steel scale armor. And you see a scale kind of on the uh, wall behind her. A, um, a shield with two white stripes on electric blue. She looks up. Yes? You... You were here the other day. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, 
I was hoping that with our previous interaction, you might be more inclined to hear what I have to say and at the very least, maybe rest my mind a little bit. She nods. Sure. Uh, I don't know how serious this is, but I, I come upon some information regarding some, uh, well, rather a group of tieflings in your city that might have come across some, oh, what's the word? Contraband. Not surprising. They're always up to something. I just wanted to keep you in mind with what it was. Uh, this, these particular items were uh, magical in nature. They... Do you have names? Or she pulls out a blank sheet of parchment. Uh, I do not... Down. I don't know. I did not get any of the tieflings' names, but they are located at the Hangman's Bar in a park called the Devil's Cut. She nods. I recognize the place. Do you have any descriptions? I apologize, my memory isn't as good as some others, but I do know there was a, a red one and one that looked a little bit more human-like. Okay. And this contraband, do you know what it was? There were a couple of marbles that uh, I believe I heard some refer to it as nether. Uh, nether. Never heard of it. I, I just know that it allows for temporarily allows you to one to become invisible for a while and maybe some other effects. I do know that they, I think that they're addictive in nature, but uh, I don't know much other than that. I'm not really, that's not my expertise. I do know that they were mildly somewhat smuggled into the town. And because of that, it kind of set off alarms in my head and I smuggled through. Who? Uh, I'm not 100% positive, to be honest with you. I just I just know that they were given to uh, the tieflings you see. at the Devil's Cut. What was your name? My name is Calvin. Calvin, okay. I'll have someone look into it. Um, Dallin. A moment or two later, the Dallin who helped get you in tonight um, that you met a few days ago. Uh, it comes back in. Who's on the outer sink patrol tonight? Dallin grabs a piece of paper on the wall just outside of the um, officer's room. Uh, looks like Hemrod and Mola. Have them come into my office before they go. Dallin nods and heads deeper into the outpost. All right, I'll speak to them and have them look into this. Thank you, Dallin. I oh, I appreciate that. I I just wanted to make sure that it was followed up on. I don't want any surprises or anything, just in case. I mean, you never know. People can get into what kind of mischief they can when they're all invisible and such. I appreciate the heads up. Are you considering joining? Unfortunately, no. I have another calling. It might be in my future. I have no idea. We'll I know need, it is something that's worth it, but... We'll need plenty of hounds for here. And for the upcoming war across the sea. If you're interested, the pay is high. Uh, I, I, that's a, that's a struggle. Uh, I feel like I have other obligations that I must attend to. But, I apologize. If, if you're interested, ask around, come see me. Pay is high. You can get citizenship, eventually on property, as well as work your way up. Um, otherwise, I will have them look into this. Is there anything else you needed? Uh, yeah. Uh, when we came in, when we first met, it was regarding an incident with uh, some cultists, if you recall. I don't know. I don't re exactly remember what all happened. I kind of stand in the back. I'm just more of a, I hit things and other people do stuff, but I find myself in the precarious position right now to be talking to you. So, um... I don't know if you guys, if you retrieved the body from us of uh, a one Eliza. We he recovered a headless body as well as a few others, as well as a numerous amount of bones. Might I ask what happened to the remains of that headless body? Um, it has or it will be burnt. Okay, uh, this might sound 
uh, a bit awkward, but the spirit of the one that was that once body had kind of visited us that went into that crypt that night, and she's kind of undead again. You're bullshitting me. I wish it hurt really bad. Make a persuasion check, Helen. That's an 18. Okay. I... The body will be burned tonight after some final experimentation, I'm told. I will get this information to the appropriate people so they will know, and perhaps put out a contract on the creature. There are people who hunt these things. Okay, well, uh, that's that's good to know as well. I, I do believe she is uh, still in service of the will. Um, I do believe uh, a black rune is looking in the manner as well. Yes, he's the one. You guys can correlate. That would be, you know. He's doing the final experimentation. I'll oh. make sure he's up to date. Okay, awesome. That's 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 swell. Well, Calvin, you've been very useful. If you have any other information, come to me with it. And if you are seeking work, come to me. I'll find you the best contracts. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Anything I can do to help? Well, there's not anything else. I'll uh, see my way out. Thank you for your time. And then he'll head on back and try to find his way to where he thinks his friends are. Okay. She nods as you leave. As you are leaving out the door, you see two individuals entering in the room. A half-orc, about your size, and you see a halfling. Um, as they enter, you hear as you're walking out the door, Imrad, I'm all alive. Work for you. Before the voice gets too indistinct for you to hear. You're given some vague directions. Just what Amson had to try to find them again. Give me a persuasion check, just act, asking around. Let's we'll see how long it'll take you to get back. I'm not happy that I'm wasting this on this, but it was a natural 20. All right. So you run into someone who's running through the streets. Um, it looks like they're still like pulling up their pants and trying to attach their suspenders again with like a dark cloak on their shoulder. And you almost run into them as you ask. Turns out uh, Freddy here is late for work, late for work at the Jekyll and Hyde. And he has to run, but if you run with him, he'll lead you straight there. I will follow. Okay, uh, so coming back, we see Ezekiel, who's digging into his toes, um, as Melly kind of looks in at first in disgust, but then I think eventually in sort of scientific curiosity as to what that is. She drinks her drink, which is almost like layered, rainbow-colored drink. It almost seems to sparkle and move each layer distinctly. Ezekiel, you see the two officer-looking individuals approach. The female speaks up. Would you please stop that? Oh, this? I am so sorry. I just am unfamiliar with your customs around here. That's quite all right if you'll just put your foot down. Make it all go back to drinking in peace. Would you like to join us? No, not particularly. Of course, everything has its place here, and yours is clearly not here. This is my place, and you're welcome to stay in it, but just be respectful. Is it respectful to... Enforce your will on others simply because you believe you own a piece of this earth. She kind of sighs and leans in and kind of puts both of her palms onto the um, the countertop that you guys are drinking off of. I'm off duty, and I really don't want to get into it tonight. What would you like to get into? I'm going to ask one more time. Please put your foot down so we can go back to drinking. All right, I've had my fun. You can still have yours later if you'd like. Enjoy your evening. Yeah, Zeke, give me a, a provocation check. <laughs> I guess intimidation. Yeah, that, I think that's more... I'm not actually persuading. <sighs> Seven. <laughs> okay. She begins to turn around before you say that last comment. You see she stops and begins to turn. You see her hand go towards the hilt of her sword on her side. But before she turns around, the other gentleman with her grabs her shoulder and just kind of pulls her 
And with just a little bit of effort, uh, kind of, she releases her hilt and walks away back to her corner with the other officers. And I'll turn to Melly. Sometimes it's nice to just remind them that they don't own this world. And that we don't have to care what the fuck they think. How's your drink? Uh, she hiccups loudly. And a uh, bubble of pearlescent changing colors comes out of her mouth. Well, that's a present. Pops in a spark. Um, but you separately, or whatever you guys are doing, Ezekiel and Melly on one side and Jekyll, and then the rest in temper, before Cal and you will eventually make it there, maybe an hour after they arrive there, between your meeting and then coming back. You guys just have more drinks, hang out, talk about what's to come. Actually, if there's an opportunity to gather everybody, Ezekiel would like to talk to them. So maybe maybe after provoking the snooty people, I'll drag drunken Melly down to Hyde. Okay. And and Hyde is literally across the hallway into the other side of this house turned tavern. Yeah, it's a perception thing. They seem less it clean is. in it this is. side. <laughs> it's a world away. <laughs> You're right. So you enter into the Hyde side. And we'll say, you know, not too long after a second round and then Ezekiel, you pull Melly in. Uh, Calvin, you approach the door where there's a half orc standing there who says it's a, a gold for entrance. I uh, toss him a gold. Okay. Do you flip the coin? Right at him. Okay. Uh, roll a 1d2 or really any dice. Perfect. Uh, that's love, a one. I love how the dice work out. So he gives you a drink ticket, a drink token. As you enter in, there's one side that says Jekyll, the other says Hyde. And as you enter in, you're easily and uh, quickly able to pick out the scales as Ball is 10 feet <laughs> tall. Entering into that dark side, uh, you see the group as begin to approach, and the rest of you see Calvin. There you are. Hey, welcome hey. back. Uh, thank you. What's going on here? What do we got? I'm actually glad you made it. I had something I wanted to talk to you all about. A few days ago now, you, uh, well, Mel here, uh, asked me a question. An offer of sorts that I don't know if that was quite the way you wanted to ask. I'm honored deeply by the question, but I think before you let me into this little traveling family of yours, I should probably go into a bit more detail about what I'm doing out here. Calvin, why don't you grab yourself a drink and settle in? That's a bit of a story, but I'll I'll try and make it as quick as I can. I confess oh, you know. I've been I've been wondering a few things, but I figure you probably get plenty of questions from people already. <sighs> Often, yes. <laughs> well, you don't need the whole life story, but uh easiest to start is uh people like me with the divine blood, pop up in my family every few generations. Most of them are as plain as can be. But uh, when we do pop up, it is expected of us to follow a certain path, and we are guided on that path by... Oh, she is difficult to explain. Aflot is a celestial being of sorts. She's been talking to me in my dreams since I was born, telling me of a great destiny I was to fulfill. Suffice to say, I did not go about that destiny in quite the way she had desired, and in choosing my own path, Offlot and I lost touch for a long time. Until... I discovered this, and I'll reach into my bag and pull out that stone tablet map. I was exploring outside of my grove, and I came upon this. There Offlot was, after years, telling me that this was the purpose I was born for, and that I was to follow this path that this map, I guess, is laying out. It seemed to be a map to the other circles of the Druidic Order. My own, the circle uh, in Severwind, is just one of many. And not Severwind, sorry, the Iron Hill. 
when I found the map, there was a portion of it that I could decipher, and the only one I could was the circle in Severwind. Shortly before meeting you all, myself and a few others from my order went to that grove. It's hard to... The grove wasn't there anymore. We just found mist and a creature. A hag of some sort, I think. I only caught a glimpse. Fiendish in nature, and... The mist, the fog was so heavy, we got separated. I thought I was running towards them. I could hear them screaming, everybody. I kept running. Until the screams stopped. I don't know why I was spared, but I couldn't... There was no one left from that circle, and I was the only one left with any knowledge of what was happening, so I came back, intending to go to the only other circle I know of. The one near Naminet, the first circle. However, now, uh, given what happened at the Severwind Circle, I... Uh, well, if we're going to take Offlot... Not Offlot, sorry, getting everybody. Orizana. Back to my hometown, it would be nice to stop by and warn them and check if they're all right. But the thing is, I'm happy to go with you on this pilgrimage. But this is something I am apparently destined to do. And if I go with you, I might ask for your help on this mission. I don't know what it is yet, though. I got a few images the other day. I'm still deciphering. I might have a lead, but... This is important to me, and if I'm going to come along, I need you to know that, because I'm happy to help you all out with anything that you come across, but I'm going to need to do this. Question for the DM. Can I roll, let's say, history to see what stories Amson has heard about hags? Sure. Okay. I'm going to use luck. Because that was a terrible roll, and I actually want to know something. I was going to actually ask before you rolled, I am also proficient in history. Could I do the same? Sure. So I've rolled lower. <laughs> so that's a nine. That's a ten. You both kind of have the same stories that are told children. Fairy tales. You know a little basic information about that. They're ugly witches that use magic for evil. And kids don't go out at night, don't wonder, wonder in that mysterious forest. Hags will eat children kind of thing, so don't exactly, get yeah, in trouble. Yeah. Actually, Amson, Melly, you all might know some, something Offlot said to me when I found this stone. Do you know what the Vivus tree is? Oh. V-I-V-U-S. I'll type I it. roll history for that? Yeah, I'll say history... Probably history or arcana. Okay. I'll roll history. I will also that is significantly three. better. Hey, uh, can I roll arcana for that since I'm proficient as well? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got 16 history. I got Nat 20 history. for arcana. So 16 history for Amson, Nat 20 arcana for Ellery, and then I heard someone else. 18 history for Vesper. Okay. So. Amson, um, you know, you've heard of this tree before. Mostly, not quite fairy tales, but in more of the backdrop to stories, the backdrop to epics about some heroes, about the wild, um, about the North Hill and how it formed and how life came to it. Vesper, you get about the same, though. Amson and Vesper, you would both get sort of this religious side to it that the vivistry has to do with a sigma. And it was said to be the first seed, the first tree planted by a sigma, the god of nature. What it was or what it did, it's unclear. Ellery, with your knowledge of Arcana, your studying of it, you've heard that the vivistry is still magical, that there it is said that possibly way lines of arcane energy flow through it. That is a connection between the natural, the divine, and the mundane world. That it is a seed spark of creation itself. It is life. 
Well, I don't know very much about hags, other than they'll come and eat children that night. However, from what I know about the Vivis tree is that it's a very legendary tree associated with creation stories and great heroes of nature and things of, uh, and such. I've heard of it too. They say that way lines might flow through it. I was doing some research involving way lines a while back. And there's those way lines again. They just keep popping up for you. <laughs> and they might have something to do with the tablet, too. I was that book that I purchased. I was futzing with that and trying to figure out if there was some connection when I saw a few visions. I think maybe they might be other circles. I still haven't quite figured them out. Does your grove worship a saint, Ma? Is that how you started following? Yes. Uh, I've worshipped a th- saint Ma my whole life. I've heard of the Vivis Vivis tree. I'm not particularly inclined for books, so I was hoping you might have a little bit more. But yeah, uh, a saint Ma is special to my grove. We follow it. Well, I'm wondering if maybe if the way lines flow through the tree and are indicated on your map, and the map is possibly a location of the groves and has to do with way lines, maybe... I don't know where I'm going with this. I've had too much to drink. Maybe <laughs> the groves that are indicated on the map are chosen somehow? Possibly. I'm hoping that someone at the old at the old circle by Naminet would know more there. I mean, it's there's not much history among my people. We're more on oral tradition rather than things written down. So there are limited tomes of knowledge, but I, I believe the old circle would have more information and at least know it's there. And perhaps I don't know. The Elder Druids have better means of communicating with each other. They may know what happened to the Seven Wind Circle. I didn't find much, and I lost a lot there. Do you know if there are any waystones at the circles? I didn't. I don't know. In Seven Wind, is a DM? Is there one in mine? A waystone, possibly. Uh, let me phrase this in a way that Ezekiel would know, and maybe the others can put together. Ezekiel, you would understand that the Vivis tree, the roots stretch out across Nor, across North Hill, the um, world. And those roots connect to different circles and places upon the world. And that those roots can lead between connecting places of power or circles. They may actually be the same thing. <laughs> They may not be connected. The roots of the history may be the way lines. The way stones are a part of that, and they all be connected in some way. Huh. Anyway, uh, we have to take Orzana back, and I believe my circle is not terribly far from the coast, at least closer to it than Namunet is. So if we make it there, perhaps the head of my order might know more. It's She'll want to know what happened to the Seven Wind Circle anyway and prepare. There aren't. I was one of few there with a terrible amount of martial training that was from a path I chose not to follow, but hopefully there are magics that they can prepare themselves with. Anyway, I'm not expecting you to re invite me now, but think it over about what I need to do, and if you'd be willing to help me with that, and I'll be sure to help you with anything else that arises. Well, at the very least, we both need to go to Nymanet in the near future. I don't know, that does sound like a discussion for all of us to have. Well, technically we're all here. Does anyone object to visiting Ezekiel's Grove for for a short while before heading off to Nymanet? Well, we were planning to head in that direction first anyway, for Orizana. This is true. I don't think that's changed. Calvin, what do you think? I was going to say, at this point, Calvin comes back with the huge frozen drink, and he's like, all right, I got my drink. Well, it was this story you were going to tell. 
Why is everybody looking at me like that? Lines are very long up there, aren't they? I had right. to wait. They said this one is <laughs> worth waiting for. It's it's multicolored, and oh my god, it look it's got this little umbrella, and it gives me this headache when I drink it. But they told me to go away if you just drink more of it. So keep sucking. Oh man, it's really tasty. It tastes like a concoction of fruits and other things. They said it's full of alcohol, but I don't taste it at all. Vesper slowly lays her head on the table. Um, looking at Calvin's drink. Which at some point he says the word white rose is the name of it. And it's a frozen solid chunk of ice in the shape of a rose formed into a bowl, which the drink is in it. Multicolored, as he said, and an umbrella shore is in there as well. It is freezing cold, Galvin, and thicker than you'd think. It's the last bowl. Can I try a sip? So, Ellery tasting it, and Calvin, you tasted it as well. It almost has a very faint mint flavor, like a refreshing flavor. But otherwise, it's uh, very strong, and it almost seems like the flavors change as you take it in. It's subtle flavors, but very good. And at this point, what are you guys' uh, con scores? 14. 15. Minus 12. 14. 16 for both. 13, but I'm still drinking OJ. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're fine. So, cool. um, so, Ellery, you are currently buzzed. So, you you got a good buzz going on. Uh, Vesper, you're buzzed as well. Amson, you're getting into the drunk territory, um, which is just uh, more intense. Basically, super simple system. There's buzz, drunk, and wasted. So, Amson, you're, you're drunk. Calvin, you're not quite buzzed yet, but you're getting there. Uh, Ball, you're not buzzed yet. And Ezekiel, you're fine. Melly's buzzed. Melly's buzzed. Ball is sure. drinking giant orange juice, like the equivalent. Basically, he thinks he's drinking a cooler. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they probably brought out a bowl for you. Nice. I'm getting the fish bowl. The ones that people <laughs> share, but I'm swallowing it. Uh, okay, so you is... might actually be buzzed then. This is pretty tasty, Calvin. Just. Don't drink too much of it. It'll take a lot less than you think. And don't drink it too fast. It's always my issue. Slurp. <laughs> we were having a discussion, Bob. So, what did yeah. you think about the thing? I think Ezekiel has done much for us. And as we talked about, I think the pilgrimage is more about the journey. And I, I think this journey will be good for us. I agree. Calvin, you want to extend our adventure and help Ezekiel out with his destiny? I'm all about, you know, becoming one's destiny. Sounds like a unanimous vote. What does destiny even mean, though? I thought we were talking about sex. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, he is drunk. Uh, destiny, I guess I have a complicated view on it since I have... Been told I had one since birth, and then ran away from it in a way, and yet here I am. I think destiny is what you make of it. Whatever Offlot wanted me to be, I followed the path that I wanted to follow. But I can't deny that there sometimes feels like something has gotten our hand. I mean, how do three paladins of separate gods... A cleric on a hunt for redemption. Whatever the hell you are looking at Ellery. A storyteller, and one that I haven't figured out yet. All come together. And there's not a bit of fate in that? I think you mispronounced friends. Well, I will drink to that. Guys, you're the best. How many of those have you had? I lost count, which means I should stop. Um, I reach over and kind of ruffle his hair. So do I. I might need help getting back to the boat. We'll help you get back to the boat. Okay. I'm going to stop after this one because I can still feel it. Okay. So the night goes on. You'll stay later, however long as you want to. Having these very high quality drinks that are also very expensive, they're a gold each. Um, you didn't have to pay for the first one because it came with entry, 
Um, but otherwise, a gold each for however many drinks you got. Uh, most of you probably got at least buzzed, if not a few of you got drunk, uh, besides Ezekiel, who was sticking to non-alcoholic. And Ezekiel was just a silver per however many orange juice you would have. The Jekyll and Hyde both get busier. The music gets louder, making it to where you have to speak up as the night kind of goes on. And I think Ellery probably won't stay too late and is going to start making noises about heading back to the ship before too long because I want to get up early in the morning. Sign of that. Okay, but this song is really good. Maybe we should just like dance a little bit before we go. Ezekiel kind of just cocks his head to the side. Like, huh. All right, one dance, then we go. Okay. Or, well, you can stay longer if you want. No, I, I think it's time to go back. It's getting crowded. Whoever is dancing, give me a performance check. Hey. Everybody. Everybody drunk does it with disadvantage. <laughs> I was going to say that. Unless, if you have performance as a skill, you don't have to do it, I'll say. Because that's part of dancing, you get drunk. I'm sure as hell no. Part of dancing is you get drunk. Is it with disadvantage oh, or no? 19. It's with a disadvantage unless you have performance as a skill. Hey, great. Amson got oh, 19. Awesome. One with a natural 20, and the other with 10 total. Eight. Okay. Oh, God. Okay, so you get out there. <laughs> Uh, you stumble a little bit. You accidentally knock into people. Amson gets out there and busts some moves. Amson, do you do any moves in particular, or like your signature? You see, now this is where character player dissonance comes into play. I'm imagining like Ferris Bueller dancing. Sure. Is it something like that? Okay. Yeah, Amson has a bit of a Ferris Bueller type of personality anyway kind of wild yeah dancing thrashing about to this very crazy weird dissonant music as you'll have your have your last dance before i suppose heading back you guys head back stumble your way home people eye you no one messes with you though as you make your way out of the stone flank and then south towards the harbor to the ship as you guys are heading down the dock you see the golden elf, the older one, the watcher that seemed to be the guard on the ship. And it watches as you approach, entering onto the vessel. I did not expect you to be so late this night. We shall probably leave early to understand. Yes. I think that was our plan as well. I'm um, certainly ready to be heading out again. We've had some, some increased attention from the city and we don't want to risk staying here longer than we have to. Our plan is to leave before the sun rises. Is there think a problem? Just this nation is going to war with the elves of the INL. We are unrelated, but we are elves and there's some suspicion. We want to get out before there is a problem. And this city is full of a bunch of fucking racists. Everyone here is super Very racist. much so, yes. Agreed. They're like that all over the world, huh? Jaconi will find the same thing. Um, but you, he points to Calvin. I did receive something for you. And he pulls out from underneath his armor a folded piece of parchment, a letter. Uh, handed off by some child. Oh, that rat scallion. Rat scallion? I did not mean to interrupt your fun night. Please enjoy it. Just be on the ship. I don't think we plan on leaving, so... Good. All I need is a little bit of time in the morning before we go. And I just kind of grab hold of my locket. You'll feel the ship lurch. Um, he nods as you guys kind of pass and board onto the ship, heading down beneath the vessel to where your um, hammocks are stored. He stops as he counts. Um, there's one extra here. As you see Melly turn and hiccups, and a little bubble comes out, presumably popping with a spark. This one needs to pay our passage. Melly will fumble in her pack, probably drop it and pick it back up again with stuff falling out of it, but she will eventually pull out 
uh, coin. And I believe it is uh, 20 gold for this last stretch. She'll count it out, hand it to him, put the whatever else fell out of her pack back in her pack before you guys head down again. Um, you guys are below the ship, uh, kind of getting ready for the bed. Is there anything else you guys want to do before heading to sleep? I would like to read the note. I want to make sure Amson's not going to throw up on himself or any of us. Hey now, I'm drunk. I'm not wasted yet. Although, if the ship starts moving, that might change yeah, things. Yeah, I'm going to just lesser restoration you real quick before bed. Uh, Calvin, it should be in your journal now, under books and lore, under equipment. As Vesper, you pull out your amulet drunkenly, or a little buzzed. You probably sobered up a bit to restore Amson of his drunkenness. Just before she finishes the spell, Amson's just going to say, Vesper, did I ever tell you you're great? All the time, dear. You're healed. Oh, that, that feels much better now. Oof. I'll kind of pat him on the cheek. <laughs> okay. If there's anything else, you guys kind of get ready for bed. Some of you still buzz, some of you drunk, uh, some of you sober as a bird. Um, eventually finding your hammocks, respectively, besides Ball, who's too heavy for one, and find rest. Deep in the morning, you all, all of you feel a sudden lurch as you are all kind of shook and awake um, briefly and kind of feel the ship moving. Um, it's still pitch black dark under here. Could I have made an attempt to to wake up really early? You don't know exactly what time it is. It's probably like 3.30 or 4 a.m. Okay. When this happens. But you can you can try to wake up earlier, but you probably got back at 12 at midnight or so, maybe a little earlier. So I think in that case, if I, if I knew that we were going to be leaving that early, I might have actually uh, stayed up a little bit first. Okay. And then gone down to get a bowl of salt water and make an attempt at praying a little bit first before we set out. Okay. You gather the salt in a bowl coming back up on the ship. As you see, Golden Elves are loosening ropes from the dock. They are letting the sails down. They are preparing to disembark. Give me a wisdom check. Okay. As you splash your face with this cold, salty water. Uh, that is a 14, I think. Yeah, 14. Okay. Um, as you splash your face, the coolness almost... You're half asleep. Still maybe feeling slightly buzzed, but as soon as that cold water hits your face, you're suddenly awake and very aware. You can hear the waves rolling under the ship, the creaking of the boards, and you can hear the pitter-patter of rain beginning to fall from the dark clouds that were forming the night before. You can see rolling like the waves, mirroring them in the clouds above, um, rolling in from the east. Do you drop anything into the sea as the ship lurches and begins to head off? Yeah, I'm going to do the same thing that I did before with one coin for each of us now, including Melly, and one for Orzana as well. Okay, see, so just mark off those coins, whatever coinage you used, flipping them into the sea. The ship begins to rock as you leave port, heading into open waters and heading east into what looks like rough sea and heavy storm. And I will kind of stand there for a little while with my face lifted up to feel the rain before I head back down and try and get some sleep. Okay. So you do so. The rest of you are kind of jostled briefly awake uh, from the ship lurching from port. Um, but eventually you guys all wake, probably a little later just from drinking. Ellery, you're definitely the last to wake up just from your uh, interrupted sleep, but eventually the morning finds you, and uh, you guys are are well woken to a dreary day. Rain is falling lightly, wind is heavy, the seas are rough. You can just barely make out why, um, the island of Western in the distance behind you. You can just barely see the silhouette of the mountain in its center, far to the west behind you as you're heading east into a distant, swirling maelstrom. You guys are informed it'll be about three days before you land on the other side. Got it. Okay. 
Um, Great. If, well, I don't like rain, so I'm going to stay under deck today. So we'll kind of treat this like a uh, mini downtime. If there's something you guys want to do or work on or wanted to pull someone aside or whatever. Um, but we'll do that after we come back from a quick break. We'll come back at 9.45. Sound good? Mm-hmm. Yay, see you then. Next time on Back to the Story. I just wanted to get your perspective on on how we are. He's going to spend a lot of his time in prayer. Oh, Amson, I, I wanted to uh, share a story with you. I've been meaning to talk to all of you about some shit. I guess I've been putting it off for a while. I said that I wanted to just not think about it, but I can't not think about it. For part two of this episode of Back to the Story, you can find it on Stitcher, Google Play, Player FM, or TuneIn. If you'd like to support the show, feel free to buy us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash back to the story.